the previous video, we looked at the facts and the map of terrorism and its victims. In this video, we're going to look at the history of terrorism. Non-state actors using terrorism. It's not really new. Even in pre-modern days, there were groups and individuals that used political violence against the authorities and elites. Think of a group we now call uh, the Assassins, who in the late 11th century in the Middle East killed uh, governors, uh, political and uh, military leaders in order to create alliances or as an act of retribution. So nothing new. Uh, and yes, the word to assassinate something uh, or somebody stems from a group which we now would label a terrorist one. But most descriptions of modern day terrorism starts with the anarchists that are associated with the propaganda of the deed from the French propagande par le fait. A group or network or movement that was active since the 1870s, 1880s. Another slogan associated with the early modern day terrorism is the slogan Svoboda ili smrt from the um, internal Macedonian revolutionary organization that was fighting the Ottoman rule in the late 19th, early 20th centuries. So even more than a century ago, there are many different groups using different tactics, slogans and with different political backgrounds, ranging from the extreme left to nationalist separatists. And some killed heads of state and others attacked ordinary citizens. Some acted only in their hometown or home region, while others had an international agenda and operated across borders. So again, terrorism of today is nothing new. Some scholars that have looked into the history of terrorism have tried to find specific characteristics for certain eras or tried to discover trends in terrorism. One of them is David Rapoport. He distinguishes four waves in terrorism, each with its own ingredients, different audiences, sympathizers and supporters, or modus operandi, meaning the way these groups operate. Each of these periods or waves last about a few decades, three or four decades, after which they gradually fade out. The four waves are as follows. The anarchists in the 1880s are the first wave that is followed by an anti-colonial wave from the 1920s on. And this again is followed by a new left wave, what he calls a new left wave, you could also call it the, the red terrorism that started in the 1960s. And then finally the fourth wave is the religious wave, which according to David Rappaport started in the year 1979. Let's have a look at each of these waves, starting with the anarchists. Well, according to David Rappaport, um, that wave started in the 1880s, some say 1870s, and it started in Russia. And from there on, it spread to other parts of the world, Western Europe, America, and also Asia. Well, its, it's founding fathers, you can say, were a number of Russian writers with their doctrine or strategy of terror. Uh, Bakunin and Kropotkin were the most famous ones. And they very much used the new technologies, new communication tools of their age, such as the telegraph and mass media in those days, newspapers. One of the most notorious organizations of that era is the Russian organization Narodnaya Volnya. Um, the name can best be translated as the people's will. Well, members of that group killed, amongst others, a Russian Tsar. And in those days, that was definitely breaking news. And according to David Rapoport, um, these people called themselves terrorists. And the 1890s has been described as the golden age of assassination. Well, uh, it lasted from the 1890s on also to the early uh, 20th century. And some of its victims were the um, Elizabeth, the Empress of Austria, um, Umberto I, King of Italy, and 
a U.S. A United States president. It was, and here you see a picture of the man, uh, President McKinley uh, of the United States who was killed in Buffalo, the state of New York. And this picture is actually one of the last pictures or the last picture taken of him. The second wave of terrorism that is distinguished by David Rappaport is the wave of the anti-colonialists. What were their main characteristics? Well, David Rappaport says it started in the 1920s and it can be described as a struggle for self-determination, for independence, to liberate certain parts of the world, former, well, what are now former colonies, from their occupiers, French rule, British rule, etc. And the tactics these groups used were different uh, from those in the previous wave, and they used guerrilla tactics, um, which was diff uh, difficult for uh, the powers, the British Empire, the French, to deal with. Hit and run tactics, and some of these groups were quite successful in uh, managing to well, almost defeat uh, their opposing forces. Also very important is that, according to David Rappaport, these rebels stopped calling themselves terrorists and were beginning to use the term freedom fighters. So they were not terrorists, the terrorists were the other party, uh, and they were fighting, they were struggling against what they would call government terror. Among the most well-known organizations of that wave are the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, who from the 1920s on and a little bit earlier was fighting for an independent, a free Irish state and also a united one. And then another group that is um, uh, linked to this anti-colonial wave is the FLN, the Front de la Libération Nationale, um, a group of Algerians who managed in the end to fight for an independent Algeria who were fighting French rule. And then a third organization is Irgun, a militant Zionist group that uh, was fighting the British authorities who at that time were governing what we now call Israel and Palestine. And here you see a picture of one of their most famous attacks, the attack on the King David Hotel in Jerusalem, who, which at that time was the um, headquarters of the British mandatory authorities over Palestine. The third wave of terrorism is what David Rappaport calls the new left wave or extreme left terrorism, the Red Brigades, the, the Rote Armee Faction and other groups that started in the 1960s. Well, some of its characteristics. First of all, uh, the Vietnam War that raged from the late 1950s on until the 1970s was a big driver for quite a number of groups, especially also in Western Europe and North America. And David Rappaport um, observes the following. He says that many groups in the developed world, including the Weather Underground, a group of students from North America, and uh, Rote Armee Faction in Germany, saw themselves as vanguards for the masses of the third world. And they probably would add the oppressed masses of the third world. Other groups include um, groups in Latin America, revolutionary groups who used um, urban guerrilla to fight the authorities, governments, um, uh, and partly were supported by the Soviet Union and its allies. Again, uh, don't forget uh, also the context of this wave. Of course, it's the context of the Cold War. And then at the international level, the international terrorism of those days is very much associated with Palestinians uh, and in particular the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO of Yasser Arafat. And the modus operandi, uh, the techniques, the tactics the, the terrorist organizations of those um, days used were hostage takings and hijackings. Well, the example of a hostage taking, an example I'm sure that all of you know, is the hostage taking of Israeli athletes during the Olympic Games in Munich in 1972. That event, and in particular also the hostage taking, was watched by millions around the globe. The organization behind it was called Black September, and unfortunately it ended 
uh, with all the athletes uh, being uh, killed, partly in an attempt to liberate them. The hijackings of those days were um, uh, especially aimed at planes. Uh, here you have a number of pictures of them, uh, planes from um, various, mainly Western um, um, airliners were hijacked and the main goal was to get attention for a certain cause or to press free some of the co-fighters of the terrorists. And in those days, um, most of them who had been hijacked in planes managed to get out of it alive as the intention of the terrorists was not to kill these people, but to use them as a tool to, create, to get attention or to press governments to do something. The fourth and last wave distinguished by David Rapoport is what he calls the religious wave that started in 1979 the year of the Islamic Revolution in Iran, the year the Soviet Union invaded and occupied Afghanistan, and 1979 was also the year of the storming and occupation of the Grand Mosque in Mecca. Well, David Rapoport shows that there were many different religious groups that produced terrorism since 1979. Uh, he mentions uh, Islam, many Islamic group, uh, but also the Sikh who from Punjab, from their uh, holy center, their holy temple, the Golden Temple in Amritsar, were for instance fighting the Indian authorities. But it also includes Jewish religious terrorists. Think of the murderer of Yitzhak Rabin, uh, who was killed in 1995 while giving a speech in Tel Aviv. Well, here you see uh, the memorial site to remember that uh, event and to remember uh, the Israeli Prime Minister. But the religious waves also includes Christian groups. Uh, think of um, anti-abortion militants who have killed quite a number of people. And it also includes sects. And the most uh, well-known attack of one sect is uh, the attack on the Tokyo subway by the Ohm sect. Uh, let me try to pronounce it in Japanese. Uh, the Ohm Shinrikyo. Uh, sect who was responsible for an attack with unconventional weapons, the nerve gas sarin, uh, which they tried to kill uh, quite a few people. In the end they managed to kill 12 and injure more than a thousand. Well, here you have a picture of that event which uh, according to many is one of the first and uh, most well-known attacks with WND weapons of mass destruction. Well fortunately they didn't manage to create a mass destruction, but um, unfortunately quite a number of people were um, injured and, and a number 12 of them killed. Other characteristics of this wave include uh, the modus operandi of, of these religious groups and um, like in uh, earlier waves, it's assassinations of key leaders, uh, the military representatives of states, as well as hostage takings, and new is the suicide bombing. Uh, it's associated with this wave, uh, especially the first attacks by the Lebanese uh, militant Shiite organization uh, called Hezbollah, attacks on the uh, US and French military forces in Lebanon, uh, where they used trucks uh, with suicide terrorists and blew up the headquarters of um, the Americans and the French. But at the same time, I should stress that suicide bombings uh, ha also happened among non-religious groups. The Kurdish workers' parties, a Maoist separatist group in Turkey, as well as the Tamil Tigers, who um, were um, trying to liberate or create autonomy for the Tamils on the island of Sri Lanka, in the state of Sri Lanka. And of course, the groups that are associated with this wave include Al-Qaeda, that is first mentioned um, uh, and, and first for the first time making headlines with its attack on the U.S. embassies in Dar es Salaam and Nairobi. And here you see a picture of the devastation after the attack in Dar es Salaam, Al-Qaeda, associated with this particular fourth wave of terrorism. So according to David Rapoport, there are four waves of terrorism. 
that each last about a few decades after which they might be still there but attract a lot less sympathizers and supporters and gradually fade out. That leaves us with a very interesting question. If this is true, what would be the fifth wave of terrorism? I'm sure a lot of policymakers would like to know. So they can either prepare for it or try to prevent any new wave. I'm very interested in your opinion about this. Please help me out by filling in this questionnaire. In sum, the phenomenon of groups and individuals using terrorism is not new. There are examples of pre-modern times and modern day terrorism has at least four different waves. In the next video we're going to look at the use of the word terrorism. What does it mean? How is it, has it been used in different times and in different languages?